Thank you so much, and uh, welcome to the uh, last discovery talk of the day. So uh, I'm going to talk about a condition that's maybe not we have not talked about today, and that's a, that is about kidney disease. So just as we've heard about aging uh, populations, there's a number of conditions, and chronic kidney disease affects over 25 million people in this country. If kidney disease is not diagnosed properly and early, and managed appropriately, the unfortunate end result is total kidney failure on end-stage renal disease. At this point, there are really two options for the patients to survive. One is kidney transplant. The other one is dialysis. Kidney transplant is the gold standard of treatment. However, the severe scarcity in the availability of organs means that most patients can't get one. You might say that getting a transplant to cure kidney failure is like winning the lottery to cure poverty. Today, we have 100,000 people on the wait list. But this year, less than 18,000 organs will be transplanted. So the people that are lucky enough to get this, win the lottery and get the transplant, will also have to live, live with a lifetime regimen of anti-rejection drugs that are not only expensive, but also toxic to the transplanted kidney. So the vast majority of the patients with kidney failure have to rely on dialysis. Dialysis is a thrice weekly treatment where you go into the center, it's cumbersome, and it's associated with a myriad of complications. Heart disease, osteoporosis, dementia, among others. It's been often said that using dialysis is not so much to save a life as it is to prolong death. So clearly something needs to be done. And the half a million people that have kidney failure today, it constitutes about 1% of the Medicare population, consume about 7% of the Medicare budget. Okay? No other disease has this financial impact. And dialysis is deadly. About 70% of these patients die within five years. Similar to colon cancer. I bet you many of you did not know that. I didn't. So, what's the solution? We'll need an alternative solution, something that provides the benefits of a kidney transplant while overcoming the limitations of dialysis. And that is the, precisely the goal of what we call the Kidney Project. The Kidney Project is a national collaboration being led out of UCSF, brings together scientists, engineers, clinicians, and some entrepreneurial-minded people to focus on the development of a bio-artificial kidney. The bio-artificial kidney is a two-stage device that will be located in the abdomen, as you can see in this picture. The first stage of this device is a filter. This filter will process blood and clean it of toxins. It's constructed from silicon the same material used to make electronics and from which Silicon Valley gets its name. We engineer the filter to mimic the kidney's natural filtration mechanisms. And by doing that, we're able to provide a level of toxin clearance that dialysis simply cannot. And we do this in a very small, compact package. The second stage is a bioreactor that contains living kidney cells. These cells provide the biological functions that dialysis simply cannot. What are some of those? Secrete hormones, produce vitamin D, help regulate blood pressure, and so on. And together, the filter and the bioreactor work to provide many of the functions that a native kidney 
wood. The efficiency of the silicon filter and the bioreactor is such that the system can run just off the body's own blood pressure. We do not need electrical power, batteries, or external connection. And something special about the bioreactor is because the kidney cells are encased in the device, they're isolated from the patient's immune system. So with the bioartificial kidney, we will not need the requirement that the patients have to take anti-rejection drugs. So think about this. We have a device that will be surgically implanted and attached to the blood vessels and provide continuous treatment. What does this mean? This means that the patient is getting treatment that's very much similar to a kidney and is providing continuously 24-7. No buildup of toxins as you have in traditional dialysis. Moreover, the patient now is able to eat and drink what they want, unlike dialysis. But very importantly, they have an unprecedented level of mobility. They're not tethered to a machine. They can take a trip. And some of you who are familiar with dialysis patients know how much of a burden that is. And by eliminating the need for anti-rejection medicines, not only do we avoid all the side effects, but we can save a lot of money those medicines cost. And at UCSF, some of our preliminary estimates suggest we can save on the tune of $15 billion annually if we're able to develop the bioartificial kidney and get it into the population. Now, when the kidney project is concluded, we will have a bioartificial kidney. It will be an alternative to the vast majority of the patients that have kidney failure today. And these patients will not have to choose between prolonging death with dialysis or hoping to win the lottery by getting a transplant. Thank you very much.